Hey everyone, welcome to KSSP Podcast. I am Spencer. I'm Katie. And today, Katie has some questions for me about what nursing was like for me. So we're just going to kind of go ahead and get started with those. All right. My first question for you, Spencer, is what is the hardest part about nursing? So I would say sometimes just how long it took to get certain things done. Anything from patient care to waiting on like doctor's orders or waiting on maybe a med to be added to a patient's profile, something. It could be anything from that. It just can take a long time to hear back from, profe- like whether it's the doctor or any of the therapy teams or even like dietary housekeeping, just like sometimes how long it can take to hear back from them. But I also understand that they also are busy and have other things that they have to do too. But I would say that was, for me, one of the hardest things was just the waiting game, I guess you could call it. But I also understand the importance of the sometimes the amount of steps it takes to get things done, like getting a medication added to a patient's list is going to take the doctor, pharmacy, and then obviously the nurse and the patient. And that is to protect the patient. So I get the point of the system. It's just I sometimes didn't like the whole waiting around. All right. And then what was your favorite part about nursing? I would say one of my favorite parts of nursing was the learning, whether it was a new diagnosis that you learned, whether or not you learned about it in nursing school, but if it was a new diagnosis that you hadn't had much experience with that a patient has or potentially a medication. And then especially during COVID, it was definitely a learning experience every day. There was something I felt like new every day. So, I mean, that was a little much during COVID just, but before COVID, just even new diagnosis that I hadn't worked with too much. I was able to kind of look up and use some of uh, what the database that I like to use a lot was up to date because you can search a diagnosis in there and it will tell you, it kind of gives you sometimes, if I remember correctly, like a little bit of a history on the diagnosis. And then it will also go into depth on physiology, symptoms, it will go into like treatment, therapies. Some people might think it's too in depth, I guess, if they're not necessarily wanting to know all of that information. But I just liked it because I like knowing the in depth. And then it also just helped me kind of put together a whole picture of the plan, I guess you could say. So that was my one of my favorite parts. And then I would say also people. I liked my coworkers because they were people, especially during the pandemic that I had, that I could basically we could relate to each other because we were kind of all going through the same thing. So I would say having my coworkers and then I had some really good experiences with patients as well. So I think people would also be one of my favorite, just the social interactions that you could have with people at the job, even though I'm not super social, but it's just good to have those experiences as well. For sure. The variety and learning new things and also the interacting with people, you'd say? Those are your favorite? Yes. All right. Uh, awesome. And then, so in my experience, because I know a lot of people who work in healthcare, and I always hear about how working with other nurses causes a lot of drama. And would you say this is true? And if it is, why do you think this happens? You know, I feel that I hear that kind of trope, I guess you could say, a lot. Like the mean girl nurse always end up being nurses. But I'm going to, I would disagree with it. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but I do think a lot of that narrative can kind of be misogynistic in a way. So I just don't like to lean into it. But I'm not saying that there isn't drama either, but there's also drama in every profession. So. I'm pretty sure some of the th- like different therapists or even probably the doctors had drama as well. So it's definitely not specific to nurse. At least I never experienced that. I'm not saying that some places don't, but where I worked, I'm not going to say there was no drama, but I don't think it was any more than what I've experienced in past jobs either, personally. Yeah, and that's definitely fair too. Like I would agree. Most when you're working with coworkers, there's always going to be drama. Did you work with a lot of nurses who were anti-vaccine and like, how would these people justify their point of view? I know it's a controversial topic, but 
I'm very interested to hear what people have to say about that. Yeah. Say about that. I would say I didn't have conversations with people about vaccines, especially when I first started. The only vaccine was probably like the flu shot and giving it to patients too. So really that... I do not recall anyone telling me that they were anti-vaccine or being against the flu vaccine. But when the COVID vaccine started coming around, then I definitely noticed a lot more hesitance. And I think a lot of that was coming more from fear. It definitely, I can understand that it felt rushed for sure. I can understand that concern, but the science behind it was pretty sound or is pretty sound, I would say. So... Definitely around COVID, I noticed a lot more people were, but I wouldn't consider that being anti-vaccine because as far as I know, they were still for the rest of the vaccines as I would say most healthcare, though I know that there are healthcare professionals who are against vaccines. And there were nurses quitting their jobs because they didn't want to get the vaccine. Uh, I did not experienced that too much that I noticed, at least on my unit, my floor. I didn't notice anyone. Everyone eventually, because we were mandated to get it. So everyone did on my floor end up getting it, or at least that I remember. Maybe there is a couple that left that didn't want to get it, but I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure the other hospital, the other option in the town where I am was also mandating it too. So it's not like they could have gone to the other hospital system. And I'm not saying that there aren't people who haven't had bad reactions to vaccines. I mean, that can happen with any kind of new medication, new, any food, new food, new food that you eat, you can have an odd reaction. So I'm not going to, so I'm not going to say that, oh, it was the safest thing ever. Nobody ever had, because there were definitely probably people who did have a bad reaction. And that's very unfortunate that that happened to them. But for the most part, I would say most people that I know who have gotten the vaccine are doing fine. So it definitely was, I would say, better for us because I didn't get COVID until after I left nursing. So throughout the whole pandemic, uh, and I was working near COVID all the time, but I was vaccinated and we were wearing our N95s and masks. And we also had to wear these gowns Yeah. when we went into COVID rooms because COVID was shown to stick on your clothes. So we didn't want to be bringing that home to our families. Yeah. So we definitely had the materials, at least, I'm not going to say that they weren't short at times, like the material, like, because I know PPE, definitely during COVID, we we weren't prepared. I'm not going to pretend that we were prepared for it, but we were able to make do with what we had until we were able to get more in. I'm not going to pretend it was the best situations ever because it wasn't but we were able to make it work for us i feel comfortable saying that the vaccine helped as well as the other steps we were taking to mitigate us getting covid okay yeah that makes sense Um, yes (laughs) question is uh describing without violating hipaa obviously uh, describing your favorite patient experience that you had. There's not necessarily any one situation that comes to mind, but I would say in general, the experiences that stick out the most that were more so pleasant in a way were when you were able to make a genuine connection with the patients. If you had that time to sit in there and have a conversation with them whether it is about like their diagnosis and they just have questions or even if it's just about like a hobby that they like to do, just taking that time to get to know your patient on a more personal level. Now, obviously I understand that it's still work. Like it isn't. So there's still like a boundary that you have to set, obviously, but you can still take the time to get, if you have the time, that was one of the biggest, especially near the, like near before I would quit finding that time was getting harder and harder to find. Yeah. So that was all. I think that probably was one of the reasons that led me to leaving the field is that we just weren't able to have that time anymore to be able to get to know our patients on a little, not that we were need to get to know them on a super friendly level, but I just feel like it's good to know them of course, making that a little deeper, like build a little bit of a connection. Yeah. yeah. Nothing 
super deep or anything, but just something okay. just to let you kind of can connect a little bit because connection is very important in any oh, yeah. relate like just even with strangers like any connection is just very important and i don't know if that's the universal experience but definitely near the end for me i did not feel like i could even make just that little connection anymore and i it was just hard for me to keep doing it then if that makes sense yeah definitely because i think that having you know, making that, even if it's a small connection, just any connection with the patient, it'll make their experience in the hospital more positive because yes, like, it, it's not a fun time being in a hospital. I can tell you that. No. But when you have, you know, staff who seem to genuinely care about you, even if it's just bringing you like a glass of juice randomly, like just because they were thinking about you, like, you know, anything small. Or yeah. like just having a nice small conversation about like your dog or something like that will make their experience more positive for sure. 1000%. Yes. Uh, did you have any least favorite patient experiences? So again, I would say nothing particular, I guess, comes to mind, but I would say any, I would say experiences that were more unpleasant were I would say any time there was a, abuse involved, whether that was a patient abusing staff or even just other staff verbally or physically abusing other staff, um, demanding on, again, both sides between interprofessional and then also patient nurse relationships, demanding an impatience or unwillingness to listen and I guess follow guidelines. And again, I definitely 100% can understand when you are in the hospital, it is not a pleasant experience. The powerlessness, the grief that you have to go through, like obviously I don't want anyone to be going through that. But at the same time, that does not give you a right to abuse another human being. Yeah. So I think it's just important to understand like, yes, this is life changing for you. And I would say most nurses understand that this is like big to you, but it's also at the end of the day, part of our job and we have other patients to care for too. So I think we can all, I think it would just be better if we all came to an under, like a mutual understanding in a sense, because definitely you should process all that, all the feelings that you're going through being in the hospital, but in any situation, those feelings do not give us the right to hurt other people. Yeah. Which is easier said than done, 100%. But I think we also need to, in a sense, take responsibility for our actions. That I would say those were definitely some of the hardest experiences, for sure. Yeah, I think people just need to keep in mind that the hospital staff is there to help you. Yes. And even the staff members, too, like your other coworkers are there to help you. Yeah. In those situations, I think that would help people thought about that. But yeah, I think it's just trying to think it's, again, easier said than done, but it's just about, I don't know how to explain it in the best way per se, but just, it's not like, you just got to be careful. You're not externalizing those feelings yeah. onto others. Cause just because you're feeling that way and it's understandable that you're feeling that way, but do you really want to drag others down into that too, in a sense? But I'm not saying that's even the goal either. I just think we... Sometimes as people kind of forget, like I've done it too. I definitely have been guilty of doing that. But we also have to eventually grow, I would say, and start taking, like you can't just keep using that necessarily as an excuse to continue. Like you have to learn from it. Mm -hmm. So if it happens, then you need to, in a sense, and I guess, I don't know, because I try to think for me, it's more so been a long like it isn't, and it's not, it doesn't happen overnight. I get that too. And I think in that um, situation, potentially, I would almost say maybe the healthcare person, whether it's a nurse, the patient care tech, the doctor, housekeeping, dietary, whoever it is, I think in that situation, we just need to leave yeah. because they need, and it, sometimes I think anyone and who is verbally abusing others may just need to sit with themselves for a little bit because sure. you got to, again, learn that. And, and that's also not tolerated either. So, it, but again, it's, I can see the perspective from where that's all coming from. And I've been there before too, yeah. but we also have to grow and 
in a sense, take responsibility for ourselves too. So. Yeah, definitely. All right. And so the next question here, um, here did you go to nursing school and how much of it did uh, the hospital fund for you? Or did you pay for it all yourself? So initially I, when I first went to college, I was going for pharmacy school. Okay. I'm pretty sure. So I finished one year. And then I think when I was starting my next second year, I tried taking calculus and organic chem at the same time. And I was like, no, I can't do this. So then I dropped out. And then I want to say I took some time off after that, too. But then when I went back to school, when I decided I was going to give nursing a try, I had to do some more prereqs yet before I could get into the actual nursing school. I just don't remember I think it was maybe a year or a year and a half is how long that took. I don't remember exactly how long that took to finish prereqs. But then when I got into nursing school, I that was two years, if I remember correctly, or four semesters. Okay. I'm pretty sure. It might have been long. Yeah. I don't. Because I'm pretty sure we had a fall, spring. We didn't go through summer. So summer was off and then fall, spring. And then we graduated, okay. I think. If I remember, but the hospital I worked for, they had a, if I remember correctly, like a tuition type reimbursement program where if you were going for a medical, some, it doesn't have to be like nursing. It could have been any, like, I think lab, I don't know for sure everyone that qualified, but any sort of medical position, a lot of times they would have this tuition. I don't remember exactly what it was, but you could submit, I'm pretty sure it was your grades. Because they wanted, obviously, to make sure that you had taken those classes. So you could submit that to, I want to say, your manager. And then they would submit it to probably HR, I'm assuming. And then you would get, I don't remember if it, I'm assuming it just came on, like, one of your checks. Like, they just added that amount onto your check just to kind of help for I, whatever you want. There was amounts, and it depended on how much you worked, like, full-time workers, I think, could qualify for more than part-time, if I remember. I don't remember the dollar amounts, but so that was something for while you were in school that, again, it wasn't necessarily close to tuition cost, but it was something that could help. And then I'm pretty sure I never looked into this. I should have, but they had some system, I'm pretty sure, that they helped you with loan repayment. I don't know what that system was or how that worked. I know a lot of my coworkers, at least some of them, talked about it, and I always had the intention of looking into it, but I just never looked. I I should have definitely looked into it because any assistance is better than none, but I just didn't have, I don't know, the motivation. I, I don't know what it was. I think it also had to deal with the fact that I didn't have to pay back my loans yet, especially during COVID. Yeah. They paused those repayments, so I wasn't worried about it, and then now I'm not working there anymore, so obviously I don't not it doesn't affect me anymore now either so but they do at least my hospital had some form but otherwise i had to take out loans and everything to pay for the rest of it or if you have money saved up i guess you can pay out of pocket too but i did not in terms of like things that applied to like the actual nursing itself like what was beneficial about nursing school and what wasn't so i would say the most what i found to be the most beneficial in nursing school was definitely clinical hours and then what wasn't so i don't think there's anything that necessarily wasn't helpful i think it all connects but i do sometimes wish it was a little more restructured in a sense to where you spent way more time in clin doing clinicals at hospitals like ideally to me what i feel would sometimes be the best is if you were assigned a nurse it, from the beginning of this like your first semester assigned a nurse who you followed their maybe not their whole schedule like not a full-time like not full-time clinical hours because that might be a lot. But at least like once or twice a week, you just went in with that nurse and followed them. Because I also feel like that was sometimes unhelpful with clinicals is that we didn't follow one specific nurse. We had a nursing instructor who would assign us to patients and then whatever nurse had those patients, we would follow. But for me, I feel it would have been beneficial if I had been assigned to one nurse because then I could build... Because it's just hard to build a connection, I always felt, with the nurse that you're supposedly paired with for one day. 
And that might just be because I'm a little awkward sometimes. So it's hard for me to, in a sense, build like for someone who isn't maybe introverted, then that's easy for them to go up right away and build that. But for someone like me, I feel like it would have been more helpful if I had known that I was going to be paired with one nurse for like 10 weeks or something. So I could more build that connection. And then we would kind of get to know each other, how were we, like the flow of how we both work or how she works or he works or whatever. And then like, I would feel more comfortable asking questions, getting more involved, I guess. So I just feel like in my opinion, for me, especially that would have been more helpful if we had way more time with clinicals and more so spending it with one nurse rather than because then also the clinical instructor had to then watch over all of us as well. So they couldn't, although the clinical instructors I had were great. So I love them all, but I just feel like they also had to try to divide all their attention between, I don't, was there eight of us sometimes? Six of us? I don't remember how many, but so they had to try to divide that attention. And I just feel like that wasn't very helpful. But then I also think, so I think they should incorporate more clinical time and then maybe let you do the lectures online, in my opinion, because the lectures are still important, but maybe they could have it set up as a system where you kind of learn the lecture on a certain disease process when you have a patient with it. So you can yeah. kind of learn about that lesson while you're handling a patient. Like, let's say you go to clinical and then your patient has liver disease. And then that night you can go and watch the lecture on liver. I just feel like that would, at least for me, help have helped me put it more together. Because yeah. we also didn't necessarily, like most of the patients I, it was hard to find patients that lined up with what we were learning in school. Right in my opinion. So that also, I feel like can kind of make it more difficult to grasp it all. And again, just in my opinion, but, yeah. but I don't know, that would take like a whole restructuring of nursing. Like, I don't know, yeah. unless I, unless we start a nursing school and then run it that way, but I don't think that takes a lot of work. So yeah. that's just some advice for nursing schools. If you can do that, incorporate more clinical time, less classroom time. I'm not saying the classroom time isn't important. It is. But on not, like, especially for me, I personally like to learn at my own pace. So that can be sometimes hard when you have to go to class and sit there. Because yeah. again, teachers obviously can't only focus on one student and go at their pace. They have to try to find what works for the majority in a sense. So I mean, teaching would be like, I like like what we do on here where we can teach people and then they can watch it when they, but I feel like actual teaching if I was in a classroom would be kind of difficult because You'd want to make sure everyone is learning, which they, that is still a goal. You want to make sure everyone is learning, but you can't always like signal out one student and help them, unfortunately, if it brings the others, like slows the others down. I don't know. Again, I'm not teaching. I feel like is very nuanced. So it's very, it's not an easy job at all. So I don't personally feel there are any specific qualities. There are qualities that would help, but I don't think any qualities necessarily make a good nurse or a bad nurse. But I do think there are qualities that are helpful. And these are more so qualities that I think I had to work on that helped me a little bit. So some of those I have time management can be very important because you have to figure out how to plan it to where you can get your assessments in, your meds in, when the doctor's round, when food comes around, if you have a diabetic patient. So there's a lot of little things that you have to fit into your day. And I feel like when you look at it overall, it is just like, oh, I could do this easy peasy. But and then there's also the little things that you don't know are going to come up that come up that can also throw a wrench in your plan. So another quality I feel like is helpful or something that you should definitely, if you can work on it, would be adaptability. Just being able to adapt to a new situation or a new circumstance and go and kind of just being able to go with the flow and not let it stress you out too much. If you can, I understand stress is a very complicated thing. So I'm not like, don't, we can't control stress, but it's more so just not letting the stress control you, I guess is what I would say. So just being able to kind of go with, just be like, oh, that's okay. It'll, it'll all work itself out is kind of the mindset that I feel like I had to develop. And then I would say willingness to learn because there's always going to be something new. We, no human knows everything. So I just feel like you have to be open to learning and be open to admitting when you don't know something so that you are able to learn. Because at the end of the day, it's not about, uh, it's not a contest to know who knows the most as a nurse or a professional. You, it's about the patient. So you don't, because that can be dangerous. 
I would say that was one of the qualities that can be very dangerous is some, any profession, like nurses, doctors, whatever in the healthcare field that can be overly confident. Because I like to think of confidence on kind of like a spec spectrum is what I was thinking of it. And it's like, if you go, you don't want to be overly confident, but then you also don't want to be like underly confident too. So there's, but you can be a little bit over and a little, like you don't have to be, there's no perfect confidence level either. It's just, you got to, I guess, kind of be able to do some self-reflection too, in a sense. Yeah. And that, again, like I said, learning was always my favorite, even if it was just some new evidence-based practice I loved. I do wish that was more emphasized, I guess, sometimes, but I understand during COVID it was hard because we also didn't know a lot about COVID. So there's always, I guess, new evidence-based options coming out. And then the doctors, obviously, whatever they feel, or not necessarily whatever they feel, but what in their experience has worked best for them, they're going to use some of their experience as well as the evidence to make their decision, which again, that's their decision. So yeah, otherwise, I, I just wanted to say that just because you may not have, especially right now, if you're considering going into nursing, just because you don't have any of these skills locked down doesn't mean that you won't be a good nurse. It takes time to build and develop these skills. So I feel like sometimes people can say, oh, don't go into nursing because it's a difficult field. And it is a very difficult field. I'm not going to lie and say it's not. But if it's something that you truly want to do, then I would say you should go for it. Because if you are passionate about it, then you will be able to make it work for you. Do not let others keep you from chasing your dreams. So yeah, that's some of my my experience as a nurse. If you guys ever want to know more, again, you can always leave us questions about nursing or like how last week we did gig work. If you have any other questions on gig work, you can always leave questions on those. And again, let us know what other professions that you want us to get on the show. Or another plan that we have is also educational topics as well. So either professionals or educational topics that you want us to discuss and kind of go into maybe not like super into depth. It just kind of depends on the topic. But you guys just let us know. Um, you can leave a comment down on the on this YouTube video. So yeah, you guys just let us know and we will see you every day of the week.